and thank you for joining us for Online Church. We're so glad to have you watching with us today. During the stream, we encourage you to worship with us and invite the presence of God into your home. Feel free to connect with us and those who are tuning in by commenting throughout our live stream. Let's stay connected. Links to submit your prayer requests and online giving are added in our description below. We hope you enjoy the service. But it won't prosper When the darkness falls It won't prevail Cause the God I serve Knows only how to triumph My God will never fail No, my God will never fail And I'm gonna see a victory I'm going to see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm going to see a victory I'm going to see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord There's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages, he will win. So I'm not backing down from any giants. Cause I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord And I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Oh It's in your hand, God it's all in your control You make it good, God You make it good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you'll turn it for good You turn it for good Oh, you take what the enemy meant for and you'll turn it for good you turn it for good Yeah you take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good you turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good and I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Yeah, I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Oh Thanks for joining us today at First Church. Links for prayer and giving are found in the description. First Church's doors are open for service on Sundays at 9.15 a.m. and 11 a.m. We hope to see you there. Hi, First Church and First Church community. I hope you're all doing well this week. My name is Charla Elms. I am part of the pastoral staff at First Church Charlotte. Um, I'm also a pharmacist. I'm a healthcare system pharmacist. I've been one for 13 years. So this week coming up, our church is wanting to sponsor something that uh, will help our community we're helping. 
Um, there has been a lot of questions about the COVID-19 vaccines. So we are hosting a little event um, with me and two of my colleagues who are also pharmacists. And we want to be a resource for you if you have questions about COVID vaccines. Um, also, we're gonna give you a little information about the COVID-19 um, virus, the vaccines, how they work, the side effects, and then of course, try to answer questions for you. That's gonna be this coming Sunday at 1 p.m. at our church, 4929 North Sharon Amity. It's gonna be at one o'clock. Hopefully we'll start on time because we have another service starting at 2 p.m. So we're wanting to get in and out of there as quickly as possible. Sunday, February the 21st. If you cannot join us in person, we are hoping to do this live as well. So on um, the internet, it will be on our personal website, our church website, firstchurchclt.com. It will also be on our Facebook site and it will also be on our YouTube site. So you feel free to go to any of those. If you have questions about the vaccine right now, you may ask those in this video in the comments. Feel free to ask those questions. We will try to answer them that day, depending on the time that we have. If you are there in person, you can ask us questions in person and we will answer those. If you're not in person, we're not gonna be able to do video questions at that time. Um, so just if you have entered the questions online ahead of time, we will try to answer them. Thank you so much. We hope you guys have a great day. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Greetings everyone, Pastor Nathan here. I thank you for joining us for a few moments to talk about the word of the Lord together. My title for this Bible study is somewhat self-revealing and it's simply this, chainsaws and stupidity. As you can immediately guess, I have a story to tell you. Okay, so I've spent a good bit of time around power tools. Uh, most of my work experience is in uh, various construction trades and the related project management that goes along with that. Um, I started working in construction at really, uh, I guess it'd be fair to say my early teens, 13 years old, um, when we were building the sanctuary that we are in now, um, I was very young and I probably played more than I worked in the beginning. And maybe as I got older, I did a little bit better at working. I've spent a lot of times around power tools. Um, I have owned uh, ma massive concrete uh, core cutting machines. I've owned saws, uh, concrete saws. I've owned, I've operated uh, excavators and bulldozers and skid steers and driven dump trucks. I, you name it. I have a lot of experience. So, I'm a little jaded, AKA a little uh, vain about my relative skill in these areas. Um, for years, because I was the company owner, um, I would pull up on a job site and I was the designated safety man. I was the guy who hopped out and said, you need to be tie that off. You need a ladder here and griped at my guys uh, because they just were trying to get the work done. And it's a different job. Safety is a separate job. Uh, and you have to have somebody outside of the frustration circle uh, to be a good safety guy. Anyway, I know this stuff. So I'm cutting these little branches in my front yard with the most pathetic little chainsaw you've ever seen in your life. I mean, it's the kind of thing that my, my wife would come home with from Home Depot. <laughs> I just have no respect for this chainsaw. It's just a little old tiny thing and I'm showing some stuff and trying to get it done. And it's just, you can imagine. And I won't go into details, but let's just say uh, I was doing it wrong. I was holding everything wrong. The chainsaw broke through, caught, hopped in the air back at me um, and fell right toward my thumb. And I knew, or my left hand, I knew uh, this is how it happens. I know, I knew, I know I could give a lecture on how fast it happens and how you won't see it coming. Um, and how if I, I could give the safety lecture, I, I've done it a few times. Uh, and here I am, stupid. Abs I did everything wrong. At this moment, if you could fr freeze this, um, this moment where I'm like, ah, and the chainsaw's like, well, and you get the idea. Um, if you could freeze that. I would say to that guy, whatever happens next is your fault. I would say to that guy, whatever happens next, you did, and you deserve it. You did it. Now, here's the good news. Um, I happen to flinch the right way. This is not a plan. This is just a luck. Uh, this is, well, let me say it differently. This is just the goodness of the Lord. Um, <laughs> I, I just flinched the right way and I barely grazed my, my, my left thumb and took a, took a good chunk of skin out, but didn't bleed much. Um, I, whatever happened at that moment, I deserved, I knew better. And when I was done, I was ashamed. 
I know that sounds funny. I wasn't relieved. I was ashamed. I was angry at myself. I had to walk back and forth and talk to myself a little bit because I deserved to have a bad outcome because I did everything wrong. Uh, here's what I know. Uh, oftentimes in our lives, uh, we do things wrong. <laughs> oftentimes in our story, I, I don't care how religious you are, um, unless you've already been translated into heaven and you're already, you know, you have complete and total victory over the old man within you, um, you understand. Uh, we can look back at ourselves and have this sense of shame. Now, as we have a fairly complicated relationship with shame nowadays, um, we, we like to think that uh, we aren't a society that uses shame. Uh, we like to think about, we like to say things like, you do you, and whoever you are, you let that, you just be who you are, don't be ashamed. We all say that, but then the moment someone does something stupid, cancel culture comes and the shame begins. If you have ever, let's say you got elected to a, a, a civic position, a, a mayor or something, people will go through every tweet you have ever said. They will get every single thing you have ever said. And they will try to find one place where you did something, shall we say, less than wise. And if they can find that, you're done. Now, here we, the same society, we say on one hand, you do you, you be who you are. Um, until the moment you aren't who we think you should be, and then we use shame like a weapon. Psalms 25 is about shame. Uh, I won't read all of the, the psalm, but I, I want you, if you will, <clears throat> if you have a Bible nearby, to open your Bible and read this psalm. Um, it is about shame. Uh, it is mentioned a lot. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Uh, o my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. None who wait for you shall be put uh, to shame. Uh, they shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Uh, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. And for you, I wait all the day long. If you go down through this, uh, this passage, uh, you will see uh, repeatedly these statements of how God has uh, saved us, but yet he has also rebuked us. This is a uh, interesting reality. Um, the psalm is bracketed with this realization of shame in the human experience. It opens with three mentions of shame. That's what we read together. And then we, it ends in the same way back with the problem of shame. Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. <clears throat> Let me not be put to shame. Excuse me, <clears throat> for I take refuge in you. So biblically, shame is uh, its a fairly complicated, complicated uh, reality. Um, <clears throat> if you just want to talk in terms of language and its usage, uh, you would have to say that that, that shame is this painful emotion that's birthed within an individual by a negative evaluation. They're ashamed of what they've done. They, they, they shake their head at themselves. They complain about themselves. They, you should be ashamed of yourself. That's how it happens as an individual. Um, how it happens within a group is when the group becomes aware of a behavior that you wish they didn't know uh, about you. And shame is very much a part of the human experience. I, I think particularly in our, our, our younger years, um, if you spend much time with teenagers, you, you, can, you can feel the tremendous, uh, the soul aching fear of looking stupid in front of their, of their peers. So shame, <clears throat> it's part of us. It's part of how we do life. And um, the word of the Lord gives us these perspectives on shame. And I, I, I want you to see some of the, the, the complexity uh, that is in it. Now, in this passage, I'm going to encourage you to read Psalms 25. Uh, in this passage, um, you'll see uh, the Lord judges those who are shameful. Different language may be used, but uh, he 
shames sinners. He crushes sinners. He exposes and judges and condemns sinners. Uh, But then uh, a little bit later, it'll say, good and upright is the Lord, for he Uh, or therefore he instructs sinners in the way. Uh, Apparently, this shame issue is a little bit complex in that uh, there are some types of sin or some types of sinner that God views as treacherous and uh, callous and false and filled with um, evil and even hatred. And uh, these are the types of of people who the Lord crushes. Um, And then in the same passage, remember it's about shame. Um, It's about other things, but I think for the purposes of this Bible study, this is a great passage uh, to learn from. In other places, you'll find reference to another kind of sinner. And this is uh, like in Psalms 25, verse 8, 9, 10, verse 12, verse 14. It's the type of sinner that the Lord teaches and instructs. Uh, the humble sinner, <laughs> the, 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 the person who's trying to keep the covenant and failing and is bearing the shame of their failure, and yet they're repentant in their heart. And this is the type of sinner that David hopes that he is. Uh, David isn't, <laughs> this is humorous, uh, David isn't arguing about whether or not he's a sinner. He's just hoping he's the right kind of sinner. Uh, I know if you're righteous, that'll mess with your theology a little bit, but you know, that's, that's what we do. So <laughs> sorry. Uh, David is not hoping that he's not a sinner. Uh, he's hoping that he's the right kind of sinner. <clears throat> he's hoping he's the kind of sinner that the Lord will be patient with and the Lord will instruct and the Lord will cover his sin. Uh, this, I think, is just as much a part of the prophetic insight We talk a lot about uh, David in the Psalms envisioning the Christ that will come. We talk a lot about him seeing uh, the one who will save Israel from their sins. And there's a lot of prophecy in the Psalms. I believe that this, this wholesale hope that God will be merciful with him is in its own way prophetic insight into the work of of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I want to show you that. In this Psalm, there's three places uh, where David wants the Lord to remember. <laughs> number one, number one, he says, uh, remember your mercy and your steadfast love. This is verses six and seven. Remember your mercy and your steadfast love. It's like a kid who's in trouble and they're about to get punished and they're like, remember how cute I am. Remember how much you love me. <laughs> remember the time that you gave me a hug and a kiss. I, it's, it's that kind of a kind of a thing. Remember your mercy and steadfast uh, love. Uh, number two, don't remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. Uh, in other words, remember who you are, forget what I've done. And number three, um, remember your mercy, then remember me, but not my sin. Now, okay, you see what just happened there? (laughs) Number one, remember who you are. Remember your mercy, your 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 steadfast love. Number two, don't remember the the sins of my youth or my transgressions. And number three, uh, remember your mercy. Remember me, but not my sin. So it goes like this: because of who you are, please forget what I have done. But while you are forgetting what you've what I've done, don't forget me. Now that is as beautiful a psalm theme as you're going to find anywhere in uh, the Word of the Lord, because this is this is leaping across the generations of faithful men and women who did not receive the promise but saw it from afar to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what Christ has enabled us to experience because of who you are. Forget my sins, but don't forget me. All right, Paul, Romans chapter number eight. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law 
weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law <clears throat> might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. This is what Christ has done for us because of who God is. Please forget my shame, but don't forget me. Christ bore our shame. The stuff that we would not want to be known, that is humiliating to us. Christ bore our shame. And we therefore look to Christ as the author and the finisher of our faith, or let me say it differently, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Yes, your faith is imperfect. My faith is imperfect. He is the perfecter of our faith. Who? What did he do? For the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. What shame? Even his enemies said he had done nothing wrong. What shame? Everywhere he went, doing good, healing, blessing, feeding hungry people. What shame? Enduring the shame. It was my shame. That was your shame. So we might live in this spiritual reality because of who God is. He has arranged it so in his story of hope and grace that he can forget my sin, but not forget me. That's what we are all living out every day with our imperfections, with our dumb decisions, the stuff we knew better. That's what we're living out. That Christ bears our shame so that justice might be fulfilled and he might forget our sin and cover our shame all the while not forgetting us. Lord, I pray for everyone watching this right now, whatever stage of life they're in. I pray, Lord, that you would help us live, live out an understanding of what Calvary means for us to live out lives of worship in the realization that you have made all things new. Awaken within us a passion for your presence, a hunger for your will and your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We love you. God bless you. See you Sunday. It's gonna be a great day. Have a great week.